don't know what's right for most people. Whoa, 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 you're living down by the sea. Lord, you know that it's so comfortable. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. My name is Aurelia Byrne. I'm a registered dental hygienist. And today I'm so excited to have Miss Stephanie Botts here. She has been a, a clinical dental hygienist for over 13 years, and she is a certified um, ergonomics ass assessment um, specialist, which is amazing to me because ergonomics is is so important in dentistry, and not only in dentistry, but anywhere in the medical profession and. And, uh, you know, this, we have a lot of dental um, viewers, but this is not just for dental people. This could be for anybody in the front office because, you know, ergonomics you, you affect everybody. I mean, you know, if you're in a position all the time, then you're definitely going to get some kind of repetitive motion disorder. So, Stephanie, I'm so grateful that you're here uh, because you are a specialist in what you do, and I admire you so very, very much. Um, please tell us your story. What made you so interested in starting an ergonomic business? Sure. Thanks, Aurelia, and thank you for having me on. I, I just, I love your company. I love your products. I love your message. So I'm really excited to be talking to you today and all of your viewers as well. Um, yeah, so I'm a dental hygienist. I've, it's actually been 14 years now that I've been practicing, and I can't believe it's been that long, but you know, with that, most of that has been full time, like probably a lot of um, dental people who are listening. And I have experienced my own issues with pain and fatigue and missing work because of, you know, pain and back issues and all that. So that's how, kind of what got me started in wanting to learn more about ergonomics, because I felt like I had forgotten what I had learned in school. And I was just, you know, hunched over all the time and doing all these crazy things. So I started doing just some research on ergonomics and making these really small changes in my practice. And I felt the results almost immediately. You know, I had less pain and, and more energy and I was enjoying my job again. And just because of that experience, I was like, man, I, I really want to get into this and start helping other, other dental providers as well, because I know I'm not the only one who experiences these issues. So I went back to school um, and got certified in ergonomics. And so now I founded a company called Posture Pros, and I'm helping clinicians with their ergonomics while they're working on patients. So I'm there with them or virtually watching what they're doing, helping them develop better habits. And maybe that's equipment change, maybe it's behavioral change, maybe it's um, just focusing on their positioning, whatever it is. But it's been really helpful to help people kind of break these old habits that we all form over time and develop some good ones. And plus, I lecture on um, uh, ergonomics throughout the country as well. So it's been really fun. I know. It's very, you're very powerful. Uh, I love all your posts. I mean, that's what caught my eye when I was, I was on LinkedIn one day and I was like, who is this girl? I, I love her. <laughs> yeah. so great. She's giving such great tidbits of information. It's wonderful. So tell me, what was your, what was your pain? Like when you were like, oh, that, you know, what, what was it that sparked you to go, I need to change something? Were you in pain? Did you have, you know, yeah. something Yeah. So on? when it first started, it's funny, when I first started as a hygienist, maybe in my first like seven years of practice, I was like, I must be immune to all of these issues that people are talking about because I didn't have any pain, you know, but it just hadn't caught up to me yet. So when I started to develop pain, it was weird. It would start in one area and then the next day it would migrate to a different area. It was all in my back and my neck. Um, but most recently, probably in the last, I would say five years or so, um, it's settled into my low back um, and it's just this injury. You know, it's a legit injury now that I'm trying to deal with. Um, but I knew I was you know, when I first started developing pain, I was seeing chiropractor and physical therapy and getting massages and changing my workouts and doing all these things, but I wasn't addressing what I was doing in the op. And so yeah. I was just kind of spinning my wheels for years. And once I started really paying attention to those little things that we do in the operatory, like how I'm grabbing my instruments or how often I'm reaching out in front of me, or am I twisting from my low back? Once I started focusing on those things, that's when I really started to feel the difference. 
Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. Class, I mean, those class four motions are pretty, pretty bad for you. Um, they are, oh, and they're really common. Like all of us are guilty of doing it one way or another. But I'm, um, I'm temping now. I don't have like a permanent dental office anymore. Um, but what, as I'm going into these different offices, there's a lot of ops that are set up that don't support you ergonomically, that you are reaching a lot during the day. And, you know, all that stuff adds up at the end of the week or month or year or whatever it is. So yeah. even if we have an operatory that maybe isn't ideal, if we just learn about these really basic ergonomic movements, like what you said, avoiding mm -hmm. the class four movements and things like that, we can typically make any environment work for us. We just need to know what motions to limit and how to work around that. So talking about class four, if any, okay, so if, if you were in an op, a class four motion would be something like this, right? So even if you're at a desk, like what would that be? I mean, what would you consider that? Like, a, you, yeah, would it, like reaching for your phone or, um, you know, like your scanner or scanning paperwork out in front of you. Anytime you're having to really extend your arm or like twist to fax something or whatever. Um, it doesn't seem like a big motion at the time, but man, it really adds up. Yeah. Especially earlier when you were talking about, oh, I'm not getting affected by these, you know, repetitive motion disorders because I'm a young, young lady and, and, you know, it didn't catch up with you until later. And, and I, I find that in my personal experience when I've gone into dental hygiene schools and they're young and I'm, you know, much older than them. And I'm thinking, mm, you know, you might make not you might not care now, but I'm going to tell you in about five to seven years, you're going to care. And if yeah. we could like, at least spread the message that that's a great message for young hygienists or even dental assistants or, you know, and dentists that are out there like you are going to get older and you're going to be doing these motions continually. So you need to look into an ergonomic assessment or or do something for yourself that will help you practice longer. Yeah. And it's, it's tough for them. Cause I just remember how I was when I was new and I wasn't in pain and I was young and you know, everything was going great. I don't know if I would have even listened back then, <laughs> you know, um, but that's what I'm trying to do now is, is really impart the importance of this prevention. And, and we're in dentistry, most of us anyways, and we understand that value of prevention, but mm -hmm. we need to start like recognizing that in ourselves and taking that same mindset to ourselves. Um, yeah. What I also try to stress to people is once you start developing this pain later on, and if you do, God forbid, develop a full on musculoskeletal disorder, it's very difficult to go back to normal after that or 100 percent at least. It takes a lot of time and energy. And so it's just much more beneficial to prevent it happening in the first place. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Prevention. That's, yeah, right. That's, very, that's what we're all about. Yeah. So I um, was before this or earlier today, I, I had a hair appointment. <laughs> Your hair looks and, great, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll let Freddie know he does my hair. Um, so, you know, he, he I'm sitting in the chair and there's another gentleman who's doing somebody else's hair on the side. And, you know, they have a lot of ergonomic issues too. those poor hairdressers. Just, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're repetitive yeah. motion disorders. So. I heard I was listening to the guy and talking to his client and then all of a sudden they started talking about dentistry and I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun to listen to because, you know, sometimes it's really great to be a fly on the wall when you're in dentistry and do yeah. what other people have to say. So he was a dentist and I couldn't see him. But when he walked out, I saw him walk out and the poor man had obviously been practicing for many, many years. He had the dental dentist neck like it was oh, for and I just go, oh my gosh, this is, this isn't, this is a crazy that this just happened to you right now because I'm having an ergonomic specialist come on my show, and there this gentleman is walking by with, you know, his his forward posture, and I just, wow. was like, oh. I know, and it, it's it's tough. It's really sad to see that because once they, you know, once you're in that forward head posture enough, your body will start to remodel itself to hold your to hold you in that forward head posture so that dentist unfortunately even if you asked him to stand up straight he might not even be able to at this point point. and that's yeah. what i really try to tell people too i'm like you do not want that dental hunchback that we see you know so to do that you've got to like keep your head back and try to maintain neutral posture as much as possible yeah 
So how does your program work? I mean, do you go into practices? I mean, how available are your, are your expertise? Yeah. So, um, I, thanks for asking. I first started by just doing in office, uh, well, where I was, you know, able to physically go into the office and I'm in Denver and that really limited, um, my services. And so I developed a virtual program where it's, um, it's a bit different, you know, it's different. Everything virtual is a little bit different than in person, but it actually works out really well. All the person needs is their phone to set it up in the operatory. Um, but what I do is I assess the client and it's just me and them working one-on-one. -on -one. Like I'm just watching them. I'm not worried about anything else. And they're working on their patient. And I want to make sure that I'm observing them while they're with a patient so that I can see what they're actually doing to give them the best coaching that I can. So I um, document all of their like risk factors, their operatory layout, their equipment that they're using, the different quirks that they might have when they're practicing, because we all, we all do weird things when we're working on patients, you know? And then I'm taking photo and video and I give them a really comprehensive report that has all the information on it. And then I come back and coach them while they're working on patients. So the clients already looked at the report, they kind of, have a, a little bit of knowledge as far as what their issues are. And so when I come in and coach them, we're able to figure out solutions together on like, okay, I'm at nine o'clock, but my arms abducted out here always. How can I fix that? And we just work on doing that. So and the patients also, um, they actually really enjoy it. You would think that they wouldn't, um, but they, they realize the importance of ergonomics and good posture too. And so they're getting a little bit of education as well. So it's really fun. Oh, that's neat. That's really cool. Yeah. How do you feel about, um, I had this discussion with another uh, friend of mine who's an, a dental hygienist not too long ago, and we were talking about the clock concept and, you know, being at the right spot for the right teeth and the right away surfaces and toward surfaces and all the stuff we learned back in dental hygiene school. Yeah. I mean, I personally, because you know, I invented my Aflex assist arm and I keep it on, you know, for holding the saliva ejector and then so I could use my indirect vision, I would really go around and you tell me, because I trust your opinion, I would sometimes be out of my original clock zone where I might be at a, you know, at a two or, you know, or, you know, I would really, really work around that patient, um, especially people that weren't able to turn their neck. How, yeah. how do you feel about that? Well, so I, when I first started, I was like, you have to be at 12 o'clock always, you know, but that's just, it's not always practical. And really it's not always the, and I've learned, you know, throughout this too, but that's not always the best position depending on your operatory layout or like what you said, the patient's mobility issues. So I really try to, um, I've changed my ways a little bit and I've tried to just um, be as realistic as I can because you can still hold a good neutral posture whether you're at like two o'clock or nine o'clock. What I really am stressful or, or stressful, what I really stress <laughs> to my clients is not to do the sideways sitting that especially us as dental hygienists are very guilty of doing like sitting at seven or five o'clock with our side facing the patient. So we're twisting. Yeah. So, oh, um, oh, do, you mean, do, you mean, do you mean where the legs are like like this? And yeah, and then like you're kind of twisting. Yeah, that was so, so hard I, for me in school too. Like, because remember they, yeah. I'm like, well, they kind of taught. Talk? They kind of in some schools they had taught people to do it that way, um, yes. but that it, when you're you know doing that side sitting and twisting, that's almost all of the bad ergonomic things all in one. So that's one thing that I am a, still a stickler on. But if the person, if the hygienist wants to work at nine o'clock, fine, we'll figure out how, you know, they can still have neutral posture at nine o'clock. Um, I personally try to stay at 12 o'clock as much as possible. That's what feels best to me. But I understand that's not realistic or that's not beneficial for everyone. So my approach to people is just working with them because obviously I want them to do um, what's best for them, not necessarily the, what my opinion is. And so we really try to figure that out together. Yeah, that's why I really enjoy it because you really do try to do what's best for for your clients versus what you think this is. You have to use this chair. You have to do this. Right. You know, you have to use this product. This, this, this in order to things for you to work. You have to work out like a banshee in order for you to be in the best thing. It, it not everyone um, is a cookie cutter. So not no. everyone's. Cookie. 
Yeah, I mean, it'd be a lot easier if we were, but, you know, I'm a realist and I understand we're all different. We all have different needs. We have different concerns. Um, not everyone is going to, you know, train like an athlete every day. And I, I would say that probably it's even if you were like in the best shape of your life and and an athlete, I don't know if that would necessarily help you if you're not focusing on your ergonomics. Like it all starts with your ergonomics. And so that's what I'm really passionate about. Yeah. You're great. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Um, do you think that it's possible to work pain-free in dentistry? I do. Um, and I think that that's, that might be an unpopular opinion. It's almost a part of our culture that we're in pain and that we you know, are going to end up with issues later on. I don't think that it has to be that way. But we have to get much more deliberate and intentional now with our ergonomics and how we're taking care of our bodies and um, our instruments and our equipment and all of that stuff. We really have to assess all of that now so that we can have a nice, healthy, you know, career and life as well. But I think where we're missing is just the education early on as far as ergonomics and really we're, we're not putting enough of a focus on that. And I think that that's why a lot of us are still in pain, unfortunately. Yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> so, uh, so if we don't have dental people out here and, and other people that are just listening that aren't dental professionals and they're working at a desk, what would be an advice for them? Yeah, so that's a great question. Any any job, I feel like any profession has its own issues, right? It, as far as like what you're saying with the hairdresser, I just got my nails done, same thing, they're hunched over. Um, working at a computer, you know, wh whether you're an office worker or working from home or whatever, any profession that forces you to sit still or stand still and do repetitive motions, that's going to be a high risk profession, in my opinion. So especially for office workers, because I work with office workers also, one main thing that has helped people, if I could just share a tip real quick, is to keep the most used equipment as close to you as possible whether that be your calculator or your you know, notepad or your phone or your scanner or whatever it is. You don't want to be reaching out to where your arm is in full extension any more than you have to. And then also like keeping your monitor, um, like me personally, I'm on a laptop right now and my monitor is too low. So I'm forced to look down, right? And that's the issue that we have. So if you're an office worker, it's about elevating your monitor so that it's at eye level. So you're not forced to look down that's when we start leaning our head forward into that forward head posture. Wow, that's great. Wow, that's great. And move as much as possible. Yeah, move. Like, yes, whether you, you do a sit stand type thing or like stand. walk around or whatever. Yeah, something. Do a little, do a little stretch, put your arms yep. out and stretch those yep. arms a little bit. Push, yeah, yeah. There's, there's our bodies, I mean, our bodies are meant to move. That's what they're designed for. They're not designed to sit still in an office all day. And that's why we end up with all the all of these muscular issues. So if we can move as much as possible throughout the day, that's really going to help too. Great advice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, I'm so glad that you came on and you were able to share all your wonderfulness with us. Well, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. And I, I admire you as well with what you've done with your products and your like green initiatives and all that. I just I love what you're doing, too. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more and getting an assessment and reaching out to Stephanie, go ahead. And it's posturepros um, dot, dot com, right? Yep. And, uh, I, dot and net. Dot net, dot net. Yes. Um, I, also, I also have her in all of my, every every email that goes out to all of my subscribers, you're in there because I believe in you, believe in you so very much. So, you know, go to YouTube, go to LinkedIn, go, you know, find Stephanie wherever you, wherever you, you can like her, follow her. She's always got some very cool stuff um, <laughs> to, to, you know, live by if you're a dental, a, clin a clinician in general, if you're, even if you're a dental assistant, those poor poor people they there's just they're just always following that dentist around and it's so hard because i know I, and you were a dental assistant as well right so i, I wasn't i wasn't oh. but i when i go in and work with them it's it's unfortunate but they their needs typically are last you know yeah. as far and so i really try to stress when i'm working a dentist and assistant i'm like you guys have to work together you have to communicate together to make sure that you both have good ergonomics because it's not fair for one to be 
with good ergonomics and then the other one folded up like a pretzel, you know? <laughs> no, it's, it's, I know, I know, because I've, I've, I've been there before. So yes, follow Stephanie, go to Facebook, let's check out her very neat um, videos and, you know, like us, follow us, you know, Wellness Wednesday will be here. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, thank you. Very, thank you. Very great day. Thanks. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. -bye.